This is Mario with MIA Microflight. In this video, I will show you six ways that you can improve your Mobula 7, little tiny palm size racing quad. Here's my Mobula 7, and I'll begin with some of the more important ones here. Let's start with the securing the wires. The wires that uh, come from the motors and reach into the flight controller via these connectors as they come stuck these are loose so in order to tidy this up I used a couple tie wraps here one there and one there as you see them and they're tied right on the uh, bridge that uh, is between these two circular sections of the frame likewise at the other side the next thing I did is to improve the landing gear of this. This has no landing gear by the way and when you land hard it typically lands on the screws that support the little tiny motors and also on the battery. Now if you're using a two cell battery with a adapter that they give you it's just a 3D printed a flexible adapter here it's just a re rectangular piece you have a battery inside here and you have the other battery that sits on top kind of piggyback on top of each other <clears throat> and that becomes your landing pad but I typically fly for one and this video is mainly for beginners. The landing gear is nothing more than also four little tie wraps that have been snugly secured to the arms here of these uh, circular sections of the frame. So you have one there, two, three, and four. And they are about an inch length to form these legs. Now I bend them outward, you know, just to create that spring suspension that you have there so when you land hard it's able to bounce and that's what you want you know, the other thing that I did on mine is uh, to secure the connectors here the wire that comes out out of the flight controller board and comes out to the back and normally that's supply stuck kind of loose and so I wanted to tidy that up and secure that a little bit better with this tie wrap here now this one is uh, snug but not overly tight and th that's in order not to fray the silicone uh, sheathing on the wires likewise on the on the motors the motors use uh, silicone sheathing so these tie wraps here are there just to hold these things in place so they don't flop around the other thing I did to the <clears throat> connector wires is I secured uh, the wire that runs um, from uh, connector to connector making a serious uh, connection I tied that up with a tie wrap at the top of the canopy here at the top of the canopy has a little slot there so I ran the tie wrap along the, the inside of the slot and through the blue wire here to secure it at the top and so that's the other and that keeps it nice and steady but also flexible at the same time so from so much use when you start flying this a lot you know these these things if they were loose they 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 will fray eventually at some point so i rather fray the wire at this location here at this loop here that i can easily change or you know reset or modify very easily than having to having the wires fray at the uh, near the board now for that you know you would have to take out the board you have to re remove all the components so it's a little more work that way so that's the reason why i did mine that way the other thing that I did is I used a bit of heat shrink tubing between these two connectors <clears throat> and that's also to keep them together and not keep them separate flopping. So I can still reach my battery connection from here. I insert my battery into the battery compartment here and I connect it that way. Now I fly with, uh, typically I fly with one cell. I mean that's plenty fast in for flying in my backyard on calm uh, days. But I, I do fly once in a while with the two cells. Uh, I mean that is for, for racing. Now I don't do too much racing in, in the backyard. I just fly for fun. You know, I, I do fly fast and one cell is fast enough you know, on this little quad. It's, it's an excellent quadcopter. Uh, you know, and just the versatility of going from one to two cells is, makes it even more attractive and that's the reason why I got this uh, particular one. Now the other modification that I did is I added this little foam pad here and that's just to secure the batteries a little more snug here. Now, I did away with the uh, adapter that they uh, supply you, you know, for flying two cells. 
Now when I fly with two cells, I do have to remove this and I have to use that adapter. But I'm, I'm making a little uh, adapter of, of my own design using a 3D printed uh, part that I'm working on. I don't show it here in this video, but that will probably be in another video and I'll show that uh, sometime in the future. But basically these are the modifications that I recommend if you're starting out with these little guys. Uh, some people do not recommend this as a beginner quadcopter, but if you have been flying radio control models and uh, park flyers, I think uh, you're okay with this, you know, from just jumping right into it. It's provided you maintain these uh, tips that I mentioned in this video in mind or th that you do these modifications just to make sure that things do not go wrong. I mean, the last thing you want is you, one of these little wires getting caught as you're uh, doing a, a skid uh, approach or landing or you're, you're flying fast through twigs or grass and you rip those little wires. So that's the reason why I did that little tie wrap there. <clears throat> and of course, when you land hard, you know, you want that suspension there. I'd rather have this springing then then come and land hard on the on the motors which uh, tend to shock uh, also the, the components so these are the little mods for this Mobula 7 uh, let me show you what else I've been working on I mean all these frames that you see here are for this little guy here now I like to the way I like to design things I like to design I like to begin with one I mean take some basic measurements out of the uh, the, the master uh, uh, products, or in this case would be the motors, the dimension of the flight controller, the camera, those things, and not so much the frame, because the frames, I you can vary that in, in, in design, you know, the, the dimensions from uh, motor center line to motor center line. So all these frames have been done with the purpose of trying to achieve the lightest possible and uh, the, the, the uh, robust and light weight um, 3D printed frame. And I was able to achieve that on this one right here. This is almost my... Um, I don't know, my fifth uh, iteration. Normally it takes me three times before I finalize the third one. You know, it's typically the, the final one. But on this one, I <clears throat> kept tweaking it a little bit better because I wanted um, it to minimize as much as possible without taking too much away from the uh, robustness of the the, uh, the, uh, the the airframe. So this is my frame, uh, my latest frame here. Now, I also did this frame because I wanted to embed the uh, Cadex, um this is the uh, the one that comes with the uh, DVR. You can do, uh, uh, record. So this camera is, as you see it here, it's just a camera with the uh, a digital video recorder. You can record, and there's a, a slot there for the little memory card. Uh, it's got a little button on this side here, underneath here. You can barely see it, but it's there. It's a little tiny little dot there. That's to turn on the, the camera on and off. Now, I do not have the motors here because I, I was going to use these motors. I was going to transfer all the electronics from here to there. <clears throat> but I also need a, a VTX because this one comes with a camera that's uh, all in one with the VTX. So I would have to remove the VTX from the camera and I don't want to do that. So I'm waiting for um, another one of these guys that I can just take the electronics and fit it here. Now this is one option of going with a what they call a cinematography a whoop and uh, people are using these cameras because they're high definition cameras now some people are, are really going the distance and putting a uh, GoPro you know uh, uh, 4k cameras which are I mean I, I think that's overkill when you have to even if you have to remove all the plastic all the casing of the the camera I mean it's just too much I mean these little guys you know from a logical um, uh, standpoint you, you you can't go too big you can't go too crazy here so there's only so much that you can do and I think the, this camera is it would be the limit to this particular size now this one I did make it a little bit larger than this one this one is 75 millimeters from motor to motor on a diagonal measurement and this one came out to 95 millimeters which is not very much in terms of in terms of size but you know you can see that there's plenty room here for the camera and that's that was my main concern I wanted to I don't like having the cameras on top like these guys are done you know most of the uh, the little ones the little, really tiny ones even the 65 millimeter ones I mean the only way that you can get that camera is by compressing all these uh, motors closer together to the center uh, of the airframe and then mount the camera on top and all the electronics on top so it gets, starts getting you know a little a little too high for my taste. I mean, I like things very streamlined, and as you can see here, this frame was designed to be very, very streamlined. 
look how streamlined that thing is. Okay, so <clears throat> all this is missing is just the electronics, and this is a uh, this right here is a separate plate that holds the um, DVR, which is this board here. And you got to be very careful with this particular setup here because this has a tiny, a bunch of tiny little wires with a connector, and, and you know, you can't flex it that too much because you risk uh, breaking it. So that's the only uh, thing with that this camera setup here. Uh, to hold this in place and in uh, line with the uh, posts here. Now, in instead of posts, these frames here are molded, and they're molded with posts for the flight controller that simply gets mounted with these rubber uh, grommets. Now, on mine, I like using nylon hardware, so that's what I'm using right here. I'm using all these little nylon uh, uh, bolts and nuts. And there's, I mean, you don't see too many nuts here. The only nut that you see here is for this here, and I'll explain what that is for in a minute. But I do have a separate board that holds this setup here, and you can see the two little screws there. I could use four, you know, because it's got provisions for four. Now this is the one with equal distance on all four, uh, from from hole to hole, on the board. Now the earlier boards were a little weird. I think uh, there were three that were perfect, and, and then one was a little bit off. But this is the version two <coughs> of the Cadex uh, Turbo I, uh, the Turtle version two, I, I guess they call it. So um, so that's the purpose of this little plate here. Now this plate is supposed to sit on top of the flight controller, which like I said, I don't have it yet. I mean, I have it on this one, but I'm waiting for that to come in. And that sits on top of these little rubber spacers here. Now these are my own little rubber spacers, and this is the way I've been doing things since uh, the Blade MQX, the Lady Bird, if you guys remember that that far. I mean, I used to make upgrades for a lot of this stuff, including the micro helicopters, which I, I still do under MIA Microflight. So if you don't know me, I mean, this is where I'm coming from. You know, just look at my website, look at my my YouTube channel, subscribe to it if you will, please. Uh, and you can see all the cool stuff that I've done. You know, way before these things came came on came on uh, onto the scene. <clears throat> so this is nothing new to me. Making frames is real easy for me. It's just a matter of you know dialing in on the on the amount of material, the plastic, and how I'm, I I need to achieve that in order to obtain a very robust uh, frame that's going to um, it's going to perform well and it's going to hold up to abuse. Now you can see here I'm pressing here, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of pressure here. Now this one here, this this material here is, uh, is I think uh, some kind of a polypropylene uh, or poly polyethylene, that's why it's able to flex and can go back to shape because it's an injection molded part. I think they're using the same for the blades here. So it can take quite a bit of an abuse here. You, know, you can crash this and you're, you're probably not going to break this frame. This one here, it's it it is a PLA, which is a uh, you know it's 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 good material for doing lightweight um, things of this nature. I mean, I could have used um, uh, some other materials, more exotic materials, but this is what I had, and I wanted to make sure that I um, did this in PLA first, and then I can 3D print uh, almost on any other material. But this came out at about I think the uh, total weight is uh, 12 grams on this frame. This frame right here is about seven grams. You know, if you just remove the the, the uh, <clears throat> all the components and you just uh, weight the frame, so seven grams versus four grams, I'm about four four grams additional on this frame. And there's just no way that I can minimize this any further. I mean, I could make these ducts a little bit thinner. They are about one millimeter in in thickness. I mean, I could go to 0.65, which is what I did eventually from going from frame to frame on the um, in these areas uh, right here that you see here, these T's right here are 0.65 uh, millimeters. I mean, I could have gone down to 0.5 even, but I don't want to go too thin um, because I don't want to risk uh, uh, the, the um, j just the um, structural integrity of the framework here that supports these dots. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing I did here is I added this little plate. This is a very thin plate. This is, I think, about 4,000 or, or 0.4 rather uh, millimeters in thickness. And this plate right here is to protect the wires for the uh, Cadex uh, camera here. You can see those wires that kind of bend underneath. The way this camera sits, the wires come from underneath and wrap onto and plug into the board. So <clears throat> if you're flying, um, and you happen to land hard, or if you have to happen to grab a, a twig or something, you know, I don't want those wires getting caught, so that's the purpose of this protection here. You can see it's well protected. 
Uh, but the only protection that I don't have here, and, and it's because I was being a very cautious about uh, weight consideration, is um, you know I typically like my cameras to be fully protected, cameras and, and motors. I mean, on all my quads that I've done uh, in the past, uh, all my original designs, I mean, I fully protect the camera. In fact, the cameras, I kind of mount them a little further back. But on a larger quad, you can get away with that and still remain with a very low profile. However, on this is very tricky because you know you only have so much room to play with. But that's where where it's uh, that's where it's at right now, and I kind of like it. Let me grab one of my canopies here. Now this is a three printed canopy that failed on me because I was trying to print uh, on a weird angle. So my canopy is going to be sort of like that, and it'll be a nice canopy. Of course, it won't be a fail part because I'll make sure that it doesn't fail this time. This is just a quick uh, mock-up for test purposes, and it'll have kind of a, a aerodynamic um, style to it, so it'll sit like that. If we see it from the from the front, it's very low profile again. So that'll be my canopy. So I need to finish that. <coughs> But right now, uh, I'm just mainly concerned with the, uh, not, not so much concerned, but I'm just waiting for the electronics. You know, very the same thing from this Mobula 7 is going to be installed on this one here. Now, for cinematic micro drones, I have some other uh, alternatives also to, to use this particular camera. Same, same setup here. So I'll show that in my next video. So stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be really cool what I'm going to show. And it's going to be a lot, a lot more, uh, more versatile, and it's going to be a, a lot lighter in terms of um, power to size ratio. I mean, yeah, we're we're really pushing the limits with these little guys here, and it's because we're trying to put too much on these little guys. We're asking these little guys to do a lot. I mean, the, the, with that camera, it's fine. I mean, this flies awesome with, on, on one cell, and that's my goal: is to fly these things on one cell. I have drones that I have designed that fly on two, three. Uh, for the uh, on up to six cells, but they they get bulky, they get heavy, unnecessarily heavy. And I think that we can uh, achieve a, a a great deal of success for some somebody that perhaps does not want to race so much as they want to make uh, some very crisp, clean uh, video, uh, you know, like a cinematography uh, type of video, you know, with these uh, little quads, and you and we can still remain within the you know these these little proportions that they were working with it's just that we can't go too too far down the line and we can't make these these things way too too small because then we're, we're asking a little too much for for these little motors so <clears throat> that's what i'm working on uh, next and i just wanted to show the stuff that that's right here i mean this is this is how i work my mind typically works in uh in sets of things <laughs> and uh and it's just how i juggle things and um and that's I've been doing that for many years, so it's it's really to whip one of these things is no big deal for me. Now on this one here, I did create these little uh, curves here, and, and that was just to remove some of the material. I did not want to remove totally the duct work. I mean, I wanted to have a little bit of duct work here because these propellers do work better with ducting. I mean, they, these are ducted fans, sort of. Um, uh, setups here and and likewise with this one, but I don't want to remove totally the duct work But I did want to minimize some of the weight So this was my solution is to remove these Sections here these curved sections, you know, just to remove that from the, uh, the ducts. I think it, it'll still work just fine This does have a, a an airfoil here on the edge Which wraps around the edge so it's a little better airfoil than these than these um, uh, injection molded parts here so I think this will work out <clears throat> even better. I am also, uh, when I designed this, I made sure that I was a little um, more in close tolerance to the propeller to duct work. So you can see here, there's quite a bit of space between the, the edge of the propeller to the duct work or to the duct. So on this one, it's a little bit closer. So the tolerance is a little bit tighter. So you're able to, you know, make make the setup a little more efficient. And that was my my goal with this uh, particular frame and that's also another reason why i went from all those frames here i mean we have ones that don't have any dot work and i did this just to just to see how thin i could get these things and how flexible they could be without any supports so that's one frame um this is a really this turned out to be a really heavy frame here uh it's got my own camera it's got the uh you can see the uh 
it's a hinge uh, camera. I mean, the, the camera of the Mobula 7 will fit in here, and it's got a uh, also a connector uh, 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 port here or a connector block here to retain the connectors because I didn't want to have to uh, be um, pulling the connector uh, uh, so hard that I might uh, rip uh, the connector away from the flight controller board. So that's the reason why I did that. It also has a <coughs> little uh, socket here for the beeper. Uh, and you know it's a much beefier frame, but of course it came out a little too heavy. I think this one between the two plates here There's two sections plus it takes a long time to print. Uh, it was uh, I think this came out like uh, I don't know maybe uh, 17 grams uh, As you see it here, so it's uh, it's it's quite heavy This one is 12 grams You know, but of course it's a lot lighter than that. I'm not using two plates here. This is one single plate and that's the other reason that I, I did this one is just, just to keep it as a single uh, single print in one piece uh, unit. And you really don't need to print it in, in two pieces. I mean, uh, one of the first ones that I did was kind of similar to the Mobula Seven, and that, that has the raised the raised or uh, uh, motor or the lowered motor uh, plates. And you can see how that goes on an angle. You know, so this was one of the first ones. This, this also came out at about 12, 12 grams, the way, the way you see it here. And I printed this on a very, very low um, um, density. That's why you see a lot of cross-hatching here of the, the materials. So it was very lightweight, and I also printed this, I think, with 10% infill. So it started separating in some areas. It was a little too thin. I think uh, my, my heating was, was not uh, properly set on this one, but this was just to, just to see how how this would come out and, and weight wise you know what weight I um, I could um, target my uh, my final frames so it's good as a reference there's another one uh, same thing as the the other one that I showed you know with this uh, circular uh, protectors not so much ducts same thing here this is uh, actually this does have ducting I think no this is just a circular protector Here's another one that I did with the camera mounted on top. This one also has uh, an airfoil. And this one also came out, um, I think this one was uh, 14, 14 grams with, with a little camera here mounted on top and it's hinged. So, and I slide it here because my board was a little tight here. I went a little too tight here. So this is, this is almost the same size as the original Mobula 7. But, like I said, I, I don't like the cameras mounted on top like that because it gets a little bulky, as you can see it from the side. So, I prefer this setup here. Everything will be more compact. Now, at the bottom here, the only thing that's missing is uh, the, the battery strap. And that's the reason for these four points here, in addition to the screws here. I'm waiting for my camera to focus. So I can put a strap here and I can put another strap here. And these straps I have to make for the for the type of battery. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the same batteries here or I'm just going to go with one single uh, 450 milliamp uh, cell. I mean I can also go with two two cells here. And just because we are adding a little more weight here and we need to um, have a little more power here. Now I could also increase the propeller size because these little motors can indeed take larger propellers provided that we minimize the pitch on the propellers so they can go a little bit higher so um, you know we're not we're not restricted by by that um, detail there so I could go a little bit larger here but I want to see how this turns out you know the way it's designed with the same type of um, electronics and, and propellers so we'll have to find out when those things come uh, in I should be getting those in a few days but uh, the frame is ready and it's just a matter of uh, installing the electronics. So I decided to add this uh, top uh, protection or roll cage, if you will, and that protects the camera at the front, sides, top, and it's also sort of a, a canopy for the uh, electronics. It's not fully enclosed, and that was to just keep the weight down low. Connections at the back via this uh, section here. Uh, these are just propellers here temporarily sitting inside the ducts 
uh, until I get the electronics as I mentioned early in this uh, video. Uh, the section at the back here, I forgot to mention that in my uh, first portion of the video, is that this area here is to clamp both connectors. Those are the um, uh, pH uh, 2.0, I think, uh, type connectors. The, the ones that uh, are part of the batteries that come with the Mobile S7. You know, so those will fit side by side here on a press fit uh, setup. So that's, gonna, that's what that's for. So you don't have to pull the connector or risk up and pulling the connector or, um, out of the wires or have uh, loose connectors. So that's the purpose of that. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that this also has a little pocket here for the uh, beeper or the buzzer. That's part of the flight controller. I don't have the flight controllers I mentioned earlier. I'm waiting for that, those parts, <clears throat> so that I can uh, uh, fit them in onto this uh, frame here. So that's basically my frame for the Mobula 7 with the Cadex Turtle V2 uh, with the digital uh, video recorder. The VTX will probably uh, sit in the back because that's going to be a separate VTX. I, unfortunately, I can't use the uh, the VTX that comes with the Mobile S7, uh, the, the stock version, because that is part of the camera. I mean, I could do uh, some um, modification to that to remove the VTX and, and use that, but um, it's just easier to just buy another VTX for, you know, dirt cheap. So the VTX that I'll be using will sit at the back here on top, and it'll go stacked. It still will be uh, very low profile. The antenna will probably stick out the back here so I need to I'll probably need to modify this uh, roll cage a little bit better so that it'll take the, the antenna uh, port here or maybe just a little socket to hold the antenna uh, sort of uh, more vertical as, as this is uh, flying fast or racing so I have to do that I haven't done that this is just a quick uh, sort of uh, my first uh, mock-up for the roll cage to fit this frame the frame is done this I'll uh, we'll probably need to modify it a couple more times before I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the, the setup, but I'll wait for the electronics to come in and then I'll, I'll do that. And just a little additional information here. Anyway, keep in mind those little tips. If you're just beginning with this guy here, and for the time being, you know, you can keep yours and just make it like mine and you won't go wrong. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is this little tubing that I used just to hold the, the antenna upright instead of having the antenna more horizontal you know when you're flying with this and, and the, at that camera angle you know you're going to be flying almost like that so you want that antenna as, as uh, parallel as possible now the other thing that I did here another little tip another little mod is this little foam piece and I added I shoved that little foam piece uh, kind of wedged it between the uh, the camera and the frame and that's just to keep the, the camera tilted upward and just to give it a little more more pitch you know so when you're flying fast or you're, when you're racing you have that camera that's almost horizontal as that quad is angled that way well not so much but you know you can see the camera there but it's a little more than than the stock so those are the tips this is Mario with MIA Microflight and be sure to subscribe to my channel Visit my website, www.micro-flight.com. Stay tuned for more.